Good morning, my name is Benjamin Arnold. Today I'm going to briefly go over the Zachman framework for my enterprise technology architecture class in preparation for my doctorate in computer science at Colorado Technical University. The goal of making an enterprise architecture is to create a holistic view of how each part of an enterprise interacts. Physical servers, cloud systems, and client and employee applications all must work together to provide the functions needed to drive business. The traditional way uh, to create an enterprise architecture is to use an enterprise architecture framework. And one of the first and most popular is the Zachman framework that we'll be talking about today. The Zachman framework is a matrix that can be used to define an enterprise to support building an enterprise architecture. The original framework was published in 1987 and has been updated several times to its current version of 3.0. A key benefit of the Zachman framework is that it's simple to understand and can be applied to several different types of projects and systems. Another benefit is that the framework is generic. It can be adapted to many different types of enterprise needs, which makes it very versatile. Because it's a matrix, it does not have any phases or steps that drive a architectural change as it's a tool that helps organize information about a system or several systems in an enterprise based on different stakeholder views. Those views are listed across the top of the matrix and are represented with the following terms of what, how, where, who, when, and why. These interrogatives are used to examine and answer questions from the view of the stakeholder and are known as the W5H questions. The framework has several rules that control how data is entered into it. All cells in each row must be aligned, and the cells must also be aligned with the cell immediately above and below it. Lastly, combining the cells across rows needs to form a complete description of the enterprise from that stakeholder's perspective. The framework can be seen as creating a high-level description of the system that gets more descriptive and exact through each row from the top down. The first row giving the overall scope of the enterprise, the second creating artifacts that describe the enterprise model, the third row creating artifacts that describe the system model, the fourth row is used to build artifacts that describe the technology model, row five is used to create artifacts that describe the system as it is in its current state, and row six details the actual functioning enterprise. Using a more simplistic view of the framework, it's easier to see how each row builds a more complex view of the enterprise than the row above it. In this image, we see the first row answering contextual questions about the enterprise. Using the framework, we'd answer the W5H questions from that contextual view. Why we are performing a function can lead to a list of business goals. When could lead to a schedule or a series of milestones or even just a start date. Moving to the conceptual row, we add more detail to the matrix and start to build models to answer the W5H questions. For example, asking the how question now leads to developing a process model of how different actions would flow together to complete that process. Asking why from a conceptual view may help fill that process model as it links goals together that were defined in that contextual view. It's easy to see here how each of the cells connected to the one above it and the one below it. Goals listed in the contextual cell feed the goal relationship cells in that conceptual view. As we move down the matrix, the models gain complexity. The logical view creates diagrams that give details to the models made in the previous row. The physical view drives the identification and definition of specifications that will be used in the enterprise. Lastly, the detail view creates a robust explanations about specifics of the enterprise using the W5H questions as a guide for populating each cell. Going back to the previous image, we can see that complexity can be added to the framework and it can be modified to add more detail to the different views. This allows the framework to be used in a variety of use cases to define systems within the enterprise. Unfortunately, there are some potential disadvantages when using the Zachman framework as well. Since the framework can be broad in general, there could be tendency to generalize the answers for this, each cell in the matrix. This could lead to issues where many answers fit into one cell. Answers may overlap cells or nuance in answers may get lost when filling out each cell. Since the Zachman framework is an ontology and not a complete methodology, 
It can only be used to help organize information that can be then used to build artifacts needed for the enterprise architecture. It doesn't provide methods for creating each artifact, but only identifies what needs to be made. The Zachman framework really is a guide for organizing information and the general data collection and organization shows this. Completing the framework doesn't necessarily answer any architectural questions, but identifies the data that needs to be collected and artifacts that need to be created so those architectural questions can be answered. This is an important distinction to be made as it makes clear the limitations of the Zachman framework as it can't be used as the only tool for enterprise architecture. More modern methodologies like the open source architectural framework, or TOGAF, provides a more robust, phased approach to building an enterprise architecture. This concludes my uh, brief overview of the Sockman framework. Thank you.